is the Ferrari F430, a mid-engined V8 naturally aspirated Berlinetta launched in 2004. And eventually it was replaced by the stunningly capable 458 Italia in 2009. I've never owned a 430, in fact I've never even driven one, but today on Drive Every Ferrari, that's about to change, thanks to Car Guy's viewer and fan, Greg. And Greg knows a thing or two about his Ferraris, which is why this concourse car has a manual gearbox, one of the last that Ferrari ever fitted to a road car. So for me, this is interesting. I'm a huge fan of the 458. I've got two of them. So what I want to find out today is how does that compare to the 430 that I have right here? And is it right that this is the forgotten Ferrari or is it time for the 430 to shine? Welcome to the car, guys, and welcome to the Ferrari 430. When the 458 Italia came out in 2009, people were quick to dismiss the 430 and immediately consign it to the history books without even a casual glance back. Top Gear's Jeremy Clarkson famously told his F430 owning co-host James May that he could never drive his car again. Well, it doesn't matter, you can't drive it anymore. <laughs> and I have to confess that as soon as I got my 458 Italia, I have never even so much as looked at a 430 or considered one for the car guy's garage. A 430 Scuderia, yes. But a 430, even a manual one? No. Now, thanks to Drive Every Ferrari, though, I do have the chance to revisit the 430, and this one is a particularly well-kept concourse example in Rosso Corsa with cream leather and the all-important chrome-gated shifter. So let's take a detailed look at this Pininfarina-designed car, its history, how it drives today, what makes it special, and how does it compare to the 458, now that the 458 itself has been relegated to history. And let's start down here at these distinctive front air intakes inspired by the 1961 156 F1 car, as seen here in action. These large vents just ahead of the front wheels channel air out of the radiators and back down the side of the car. If you remember, the 360 Modena that came before had much larger bulbous headlights. It was overall a bit more of a gaping frog look, but the 430 was a bit more chiselled, a bit more Brad Pitt. As you move back around the front bumper, you've actually got a grille here down on the side, which channels air across the wheels and the brakes, and then back out along the side of the car and into the intakes for the rear wheels and also up onto the engine. Now, of course, this has now been superseded in terms of the beauty stakes by the magnificent 458 Italia, which is one of the prettiest modern Ferraris ever created, in my opinion. And yes, it does make the 430 look quite dated, but that's not to say that this isn't still a pretty Ferrari. It is. This car has the optional Challenge Stradale wheels on it, which were a £1,200 option at the time. And one of the things I've always liked about the 430 are these sculpted, super cool aerodynamic wing mirrors, which have got the F430 embossed on the front of them. Now, as I walk around the car, obviously I can see similarities and an evolution of the 360 and then moving into the 458. You've still got vents at the rear here, which channel air into that engine compartment. The engine compartment is actually open to the elements with these grills on either side, very reminiscent of the Enzo. And the Enzo comparisons don't stop there because of course the rear lights have also been taken from that hypercar. It's pure Enzo at the back. And of course, here we have the engine. This is a 4.3 litre, 90 degree V8, a flat plane crank, naturally, and it's totally different to the 360 engine. It's dry sumped, which means it sits incredibly low in the engine bay, and this one is in concourse condition. I mean, just look at it. You can eat your dinner off it. Everything is perfect. This car 
I'm reliably informed, has never been out in the wet. Now, as we open the door into the 430, you'll see it's got the very similar 360 Challenge Stradale door catch. Now, I'll let you into a little secret, ladies and gentlemen. I actually didn't wear jeans today because I was so afraid of making blue marks on these lovely cream optional Daytona seats. So I've gone for sort of brown slacks, really, just to make sure that I don't mark this car in any way, because of course, as Greg does point out, it is a concourse example. It is as new, it is absolutely perfect in here. Your immediate impressions sitting in this F430 is that we have quite a similar looking dial cluster as the Challenge Stradale, right down to the fact that the digital fuel gauge looks like it's taken directly from that car. In the center of the dash, we've got a yellow rev counter. To the right, we've got the speedometer, and to the left, we have three gauges showing temperature and pressure for oil and water. The steering wheel itself is thin. It is, I just, I just can't get over how absolutely brand new this car looks. This steering wheel doesn't look like there's ever been a human hand on it. Look at it. It's unmarked. It's it's perfect. It's unadorned apart from two items. An engine start button, which requires you to put the key in first to prime the ignition and then start the car with that. But you don't stop the car with it. You just take the key out. And on the other side, we have the first appearance of the Manatino, the famous drive mode selector, which has festooned Ferraris ever since. This one gives you an ice mode, normal sport race and traction control off. The horns for the car are built into the steering wheel and you press this section here, which of course you will accidentally do every time you're twirling the wheel and making a large maneuver. I've got a proper mechanical handbrake. I of course have an ashtray and I've got here down in the center console controls for the electric wing mirrors. I've got the parking lights button, hazard warnings, and a little electrical outlet here. But of course, dominating and turning this car from a normal 430 into an item of Ferrari pleasure is this manual gearbox. And as you can see, quite a short chrome gear stick. In that beautiful chrome gate, you've got the little Ferrari horse on it, Again, it's absolutely pristine. It doesn't look like any human has driven this car. I'm actually getting quite intimidated at the thought that I'm going to drive this because, I mean, well, I don't want to mark it, obviously. Other things to say, we have a contrasting black dashboard, which, of course, reduces down the glare in the windscreen. It's got red leather stitching on it to match the red leather stitching in the rest of the interior. In the centre, we've got your climate control devices, so your temperature and your fan and direction. Uh, the classic, not very nice looking at all Ferrari stereo. And interestingly, and quite different to other Ferraris, we have the electric window controls right in the centre, either side of the stereo. That's a bit odd. It's like they sort of thought, uh, we could not fit the buttons here or here. Uh, oh, just put it there. Just like the Challenge Stradale, we've got the other important controls down here on little rocker switches. So you've got the fuel cap, you've got the fog lights, you've got the heat screen. There's some prominent bits of carbon fibre, notably around these two air vent sections, either side of the cabin and in the centre. And these seats, whilst initially feeling quite over bolstered and a bit less like a Daytona than I'm used to, are actually pretty comfortable. And even though the seats do look over bolstered, you can actually adjust them and lessen that off a little bit. You get proper leather compartments here in the doors where you can stuff your knickknacks and you've got a couple of extra pockets here as well for a bit of change or keys or tracker fobs or maybe even your phone. Although that one looks like it's the, exactly the right shape for a 90s Nokia. Another little quirk of this car is that you actually need to put the ignition key in so that you can open the glove box with this button here. And inside, you've got a little torch and obviously a beautiful leather owner's manual, but little room for anything else. One of the fantastic things, of course, about sitting in a 430 is that you can look through that beautiful viewing window into the engine bay and you've got VIP box seats for one of those great engine views. Look at that, you can see the red crackle rocker covers perfectly. And I've no doubt as I'm driving along, I'll be able to look in the mirror, see that engine vibrating and rocking about in there. Wah! Now a little secret of this car is that over here on the left, we've got a little plaque. Now in some other Ferraris, that talks about Formula One victories and wins and successes, but this one 
is a little bit different because this is a 2007 car and that means it's the 60th anniversary of Ferrari's formation. So that little plaque there, ladies and gentlemen, is a 60th plaque, which means that this is a 60th anniversary edition. Only cars built in 2007 got one of those plaques. And it's a nice little addition to this car. So what we have here is an evolution from the Challenge Tradale 360 cockpit and a whole world away from the sumptuous elegance and space age look of the 458. It's the jump from this to the 458 is enormous. The only thing I'm slightly worried about with this car is that the door handles do feel quite flimsy. First time I have ever driven a standard Ferrari 430. I've driven the Scuderia, but uh, this is the first time I've gone in that perfect evolutionary spot between the 360 and the 458 Italia. So obviously the big question is, is there an enormous jump between this and the 458? Straight away it's a lot more damped than the Challenge Stradale, so you'd expect that of the race variant but it's actually quite refined compared to the standard 360. The steering is, of course, classic, perfect Ferrari. It's light at low speeds, but then it weights up. All the controls are light, so they're perfectly positioned. Look at the way that my hand just falls straight to this gear stick. It's in exactly the right position. It's exactly the right height. And I have to say, first experience of the 430 is, it feels really good, it feels modern but I'm surrounded by that glorious Rosso Corsa paintwork. Sometimes you just don't need fancy metallics and triple layers. Sometimes classic is good. Now obviously huge thanks to Greg for letting me drive this car. Really he shouldn't because A it's the car guys and he's a fan so he knows what we're like but B it is in such perfect condition that I feel very, very guilty taking it out on the road because it's, it's just too perfect, it really is. It's done 11,000 miles, but you wouldn't know it. It looks like it's just come out of the showroom in 2007. So what typically happens with Ferraris is that the hot version of the previous generation sort of becomes the starting benchmark for the new car. So if that is true, then this is going to be a challenge to Dale that's more refined. But, but, we have a manual gearbox. It's light, it's a short throw, it's a well-oiled movement, and it's just wonderful. There's a reason why manual Ferraris of this vintage command significantly high premiums than their paddle shift cousins. It's one of the big Achilles heels of the 458 Italia and it was the reason why I didn't buy a 458 initially. When Ferrari announced that they would be no longer making a manual gearbox option, I went, that's it, I'm not buying a 458. And it was only a feeling at the end that I was missing out that caused me to actually get one but it was almost going to be a bit of a protest. Now, in truth, I thought I'd feel a little bit of a burke driving a bright red Ferrari. I mean, it is a bit of a cliche, but in this, I don't. I feel like I'm the smartest man in the room. Oh, listen, oh, oh wait, just hold the phone. Hold the phone, ladies and gentlemen. I've just discovered the exhaust. <laughs> now you're talking, now you're being interesting. 
Oh, God. Oh, how I have missed you. Why do modern Ferraris not sound like this? Brakes are good, but they're nowhere near as good as the Challenge Stradale. They are the best brakes I have ever encountered on a road car. Now, obviously, this is one of the first Manatino cars, so if we slick that into race, and what I'm expecting is that the exhaust will get louder, the throttle will become more sensitive, and overall, you're going to have more fun. Now, do you fancy some 430 beans? Okay, race mode, second gear, ready? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. See what I mean about the noise? That is a great sounding car. It's less hard edged than the Scuderia. It's less urgent than the Scuderia. But let's face it, it's seven or eight tenths, isn't it? And that's pretty good for the base model 430. Oh, the downshifts. Oh, it's wonderful. What's particularly great about the 430 is that it is obviously a lot more affordable. It's more affordable than the 458. It's more competent. It's better built than the 360. But the downside is, is that if you really want the greatest 430 experience, you do need the manual gearbox. Except no substitute. And the problem with that is that they're very expensive. <laughs> But now the big question, what's it like compared to the 458 Italia, the car that replaced it? Yeah, there's no getting away from it. The 458 is a significant jump forward from this car. Clarkson was right, everyone at the time was right. The experience of driving a 458 compared to a 430 is as big as the difference between piloting an F-16 fighter and a Spitfire. It, it is pretty seismic. This does feel a lot more old school Ferrari and that is good because so, in some ways the 458 is a little bit synthetic. It is a little bit detached. It's a Ferrari for the microchip generation whereas the 430 you can sense it's still got the roots of those early cars of the 308, of the 328 of the 348. Well, the 458 is faster, more beautiful, more technologically superior, it has better handling, it's crisper, the steering is better, the engine overall is superior, it revs higher, it's more scintillating at the top end and has a lot more shove. But in one respect that the 430 is almost certainly better is the exhaust, is the sound that it makes. It's just a much better sound. So what do I like about the F430? Well, I think the looks have aged quite well. It's always been the more chiselled brother of that era, and it's more attractive, I think, than the 360. I like its Enzo-derived features. I think in here, I like the simplicity of it. I think the steering is excellent. The noise is incredible. The manual gearbox is obviously a joy in this car, but you do pay quite a big premium for it. It's comfortable, it's refined, it's extremely well damped. It's a great all-round Ferrari. What do I not like? Well, to be honest, the clutch action feels a little bit fuzzy for me. I'm not massively impressed with that. The gear change itself is beautiful but the interaction with the clutch is not. It's quite numb, it feels a little bit slushy. It feels like there's some kind of help or assistance between my foot and the gearbox. It's quite an odd sensation. It does feel a little bit old in here, but the 430's biggest problem is the 458. 
in a choice between the two, the 458 is the one I'd have, even though you get a manual gearbox in this. It's a shame that really a lot of people, including myself, sort of wrote this car off, never really wanted one. But now that I've driven it, and let's face it, this is probably the best example in the world, I've really come to appreciate it. It also makes you realize just how incredible a manual gearbox 458 would be. So as the sun starts to go down and my journey in this car is coming to an end, I can't help but feel very envious of Greg and his manual 430. Overall, I'd have to say I think this is a fantastic car. It's a great Ferrari, it's a great stepping stone into the brand. And on that very unsurprising bombshell, back to the studio. Thank you for watching this episode on this glorious low mileage Concours Edition Ferrari F430. If you like what we're doing on the car guys, and if you like what we're doing on Drive Every Ferrari, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week.